In our campaigns, we have to make a lot of decisions on the fly. One of those big decisions is how we want to determine the weather. My name is Loki, and the video today will be all about the best ways to run dynamic weather in your campaigns. <clears throat> when I was first getting started with a D&D, I made the decision just to decide the weather as I deemed fit. If a player asked me what the weather was like, I'd come up with a random choice based on, you know, what I thought made sense at the time, which was kind of stupid. Later on, I'd have my players roll a d20 at the start of each day to determine whether the weather was better or worse than the previous. Both of these systems were arbitrary and did little to show off the dynamic behaviour and weather shifts that are quite typical in the real world. It was more recently that I discovered something that descends from Grognard Scholar's ancient tomes, a concept called the Hex Flower. The Hex Flower is a dynamic random table sorted in a way that includes an inbuilt memory. By that I mean the table will work depends on what you roll last on it. These tables can be used regularly for systems and ideas that require multiple generated results. A great example of this is weather, as weather is always shifting and changing. In my campaigns we use a calendar system that allows me to track the date and the time uh, of my campaign, which is useful for marking religious days, festivals and other dynamic events that I want to take place in my campaign. Because I keep track of these days, I can roll a dice on the hex flower each day of the month in order to, to determine what the weather will be like for the next season or so. This makes spells like augury and druid craft useful as players will be able to determine the shift in weather before it actually happens and make decisions and plans around it. If my players know that snow is coming, they can set up a camp, find food and water, and entrench themselves in the wilderness until it all blows over. But whether you're using a calendar system or just winging it in terms of date and time, if you know that your adventure is likely going to take a week or two um, of in-game time to finish, you can easily roll 14 days on a hex flower and determine the weather dynamically rather than just winging it. When it comes to more treacherous weather, like heavy rain, snow, or a heat wave, I can consider whether such weather would grant buffs or debuffs to the party. It could be something to do with their movement, a requirement to roll versus constitution, or some other detriment, like rolling attacks with disadvantage if it's really windy. Players may not overly notice or care that you use such a system, but it's nice to be able to keep track of the weather and use it to direct the story as you progress, especially in campaigns that rely on personal narrative and challenge. I had an adventure where the party were clearing out an ancient tomb, and as they were about halfway through the adventure, it began to snow. It was pretty cool and it led to some very unique combats and scenarios, where the party actually had to make a quick decision on whether to return to the camp outside of the dungeon and... Uh, risk freezing to death or sleep within the dungeon that they've been fighting in and potentially encounter more monsters and enemies that could attack them. They decided to rest in the dungeon and they narrowly avoided death as they snuck around the various corridors looking for somewhere safe to rest. It's possible using a hex flower that I use for seasonal weather that you could roll several days or more of snow or hail. Having a heavy amount of snowfall can really shift an adventure and create experiences that your players will never forget. My parties never forget their first blizzard. I've decided to actually use the system to organically create some weather for you guys just to show the process. I start things off by rolling 2d6 and look uh, at the season that we're going to be using that's appropriate for my month. I'm doing January, which is 31 days, and in winter, so we'll look at the winter table. I rolled an 11 to begin with, so my campaign will start with cold rain showers on the 1st. After that point, I begin rolling from that position, using the movement dial in the middle uh, to determine the direction that I move on the hex flower. I rolled a 4, so I move towards cold and humid. Then I continue to roll, and interestingly enough, despite the fact that I started off at cold rain showers, I ended up moving kind of towards the southwest of the hex flower over towards light snowfall which lasted in various forms for close to a week, from Monday the 7th until Saturday the 12th. This was mainly because I kept rolling 5 <laughs> or 6 when 
uh, when I was rolling the dice, and that means that I hit the line that's below it. And if you hit the line, it's basically like a, a blocker, right? That week would be probably the most difficult time for adventurers, especially at a, you know an earlier an earlier part in the campaign. And I imagine most groups would rather spend the week in town, you know, drinking ale, playing cards, maybe doing a bit of crafting, rather than going out and facing down a blizzard. But groups who are confident to go out in the weather could be in for a real treat. The weather does shift after that, and it's mainly wind and rain until the end of the month, where we have a little bit of additional snowfall. Rolling the dice in January took me just over five minutes to do, and now I have four weeks of potential adventuring ready for my party. I typically do a full season, which would be three, three months, right? And then once my party almost reaches the following season, I'll roll for that one too. What I like about the month I roll is that I can come up with survival challenges for my players to take part in periodically. On one freezing cold snowy evening, I can have the temperature plummet and then give the players a challenge to keep themselves warm. Uh, and then they can use their skills and their proficiencies and their abilities to try and do that. If they fail, they can gain levels of exhaustion, which could lead to frostbite and, and death. The players will need to act quickly, uh, otherwise they'll die, you know, potentially. In the later weeks of the month, when it's, you know, raining a lot, I could have the plains and the forests they're travelling through become very slippery and muddy, imposing challenges where the players have to roll survival checks to find quicker route, uh, you know, routes through the area, or acrobatics checks to avoid slipping in the mud. These challenges sound intentionally trivial, but that's kind of the point. Not every challenge needs to be dangerous or lethal. Sometimes you can just use these qu uh, short, quick scenarios to add depth to your narrative as the party traverses the forest. I'm planning to do an extended video on survival and exploration, which will be system agnostic. It's a big project for me, and I'm hoping it's going to be the magnum opus of the channel. But uh, if you're interested in that, just make sure you subscribe to the channel and have your notification set to all, so you know when it's uh, going to be up. Apart from weather, I wouldn't be doing my due diligence if I didn't ever, you know, mention other forms of hex flowers that people have used in their campaigns. Um, there's one here that allows you to generate terrain, which is pretty cool. It's from a creator called Goblin Henchman, and you know it allows you to kind of change and develop the terrain as you're moving through it. So you can go from plains to hills, and hills to mountains, over to forest, etc. And here's a personal favourite of mine as well, which I'm uh, yet to use in my current campaign, as my players haven't fought against these monsters yet. But it's a hex flower that shows the movement of rock grubs, which are these little, like, leech-sized creatures that burrow into your flesh and make their way towards your vital organs. They're fucking terrifying. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can use the, 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 the hex flower to kind of direct their movement. I really enjoy using rollable charts and tables in my games as I feel like it allows me to feel a little bit like a player too. Someone who actually doesn't know what's going to happen before the dice is rolled. Some people may not be comfortable trying to improvise a result, but it's a skill that is learned through practice and confidence. Also, I'm, I'm pretty sure that if I decided to determine myself what the weather would look like for the month of January, it would probably take me a lot longer to do because I'd be overthinking it. And it probably wouldn't end up being as interesting as what I actually rolled using the hex flower. I'd love to see you know, what you guys can do with these charts. So if you decide to roll up a couple of weeks or months, you know, let me know in the comments what results you got based on the season that you're using. Thanks for watching the full video. Make sure you guys check out my Patreon where I'm going to be offering you some penalties that you can use upon your players when the snow falls. When there's a heat wave and things like that. And there's also my homebrew rules for 5th edition, which is Lair RPG 5e, which includes a unique spellcasting system, a setbacks table, and other rules to make your campaign swords and sorcery. Thanks, and I'll see you guys next time on Loki's Lair. Until then.